Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to my channel, The Pink Dumbbell Problem, and a new episode in my In the Discourse series. In the Discourse is just my little opportunity every so often to talk about some of the things that are happening out there in the world and how they intersect with themes of my channel. And this week is a little bit personal. Late last week, this tweet hit the scene. Let me read this little beauty to you. Didn't go to college? Worked your way up the old-fashioned way? Made a good living for your family. Well, as a reward, Joe Biden will let you pay for the student loans of the wealthy gender studies major. I have a master's degree in gender studies that I just completed a few months ago, so I guess that officially makes me 100% that bitch. <laughs> cool. Nice. Digging it. Now, if you haven't been following American politics, uh, last week, President Joe Biden had said that there would be loan forgiveness, student loan forgiveness, for anybody who has student loan debt who is making less than $125,000 a year. And this is coming from Representative Jim Jordan, who is a congressman from Ohio. And if you again, if you follow American politics at all, you'll be not surprised in the least when I tell you he is a Republican. Because of course he is. There's one obvious flaw that... I kind of feel bad pointing out, but I got to say it. Damn it, Jim. Wealthy people aren't getting student loans in the first place, nor do they qualify for student loan forgiveness. Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jim, 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 Jim. And according to Wikipedia at the very least, and I'm not bothering to research this guy any further because I'm not wasting my time on him. He's got degrees in economics, education, and law, although he never went to the bar and practiced as a lawyer. And the fact that he's got a degree in education just goes to show you that two people can study exactly the same discipline and be completely different people. So just having a degree or having studied the same discipline means nothing as far as determining who's on what side of a given political fence. It's kind of hilarious that there's right out of the gate a couple of glaring mistakes in his wording and his meaning and his understanding of these things. But ultimately, I don't think he's trying to be factual in anything he says here. He's trying to get people angry that us silly gender studies people, because that's not even a real degree, you know, are going to be wasting taxpayers' money and costing t hardworking taxpayers who did real university work. Um, and all the other stuff that we hear all the time. He's trying to get you angry about paying for people like me. Not me literally, of course, I'm in Canada. <laughs> and also I didn't uh, get student loans for my gender studies degree. I did it part-time as a mature student. So I actually paid as I went. So here's the thing with gender studies degrees. If I had a penny for every time somebody said to me, what are you gonna do with a gender studies degree? Or made a comment like Jim Jordan is implying here, I'd have enough money to pay for the damn gender studies degree in the first place. I've heard that so many times that I know it's coming before the person actually says it because I can feel the ramp up happening. Now, there's a couple problems with this question and the way it's asked. The way it's asked is very rarely actually asked in good faith. I do occasionally get people say, well, oh, that's interesting, but like, why? Like, what are you going to do with it? And they do mean well. It's still not a fresh take, but at least they're not snarking at me when they ask. And the answer for me is I'm not the best person to answer that question because I came into doing my gender studies degree with my career in fitness already established and with the idea that I was going to use the, the degree and writing my thesis to further my career in fitness. So I didn't come into this looking for a new job. But ultimately, most degrees, you don't go into them looking for a job anyway. And that's the other big mistake with what Jordan is saying here. Most degrees don't prepare you for a specific job. They prepare you to be an educated person. They prepare you to be learned. They don't actually prepare you for individual tasks unless you're in a professional studies degree. And even then, it's pretty broad, it's pretty generic. You're still learning really quite a lot of theory and you get to do some practical stuff, but really you learn most of the practical stuff once your feet are on the floor in the job. The other problem is gender studies hasn't really been around all that long. It really only started in the 1960s. Even in the 90s, when I started as an undergrad, it was still really not something that was particularly big. And you couldn't really go anywhere else with it. When I was finishing my education degree, so I did a, I did a four-year bachelor's and then a two-year BED. And at the end of that was when this degree that I just finished, my Master of Arts in Gender Studies, was just being created at my university. So the idea of doing this at a bachelor's level didn't really take off until master's and uh, PhD levels of degrees were created in gender studies so that there was something to go on to. But like so many things, people have this idea in their heads of what a gender studies course or degree looks like. And they really, unless they've taken some courses themselves, have no idea what it actually is. It's all the same arguments you're seeing right now against critical race theory in the States as well. Basically anything 
queer studies, racial studies, disability studies, gender studies, any of those things, they want to trash it and make you believe that these aren't real degrees and this isn't real scholarship or that it's not real research. I've heard that one quite a few times. I'd love to have a penny for every time that one's come up. Agnotology fans, I know you're wondering when I was going to bring it in. Here we go. Some of that is what we call the naive state agnotology, the simple state of just not knowing something. It's also got a, a little smattering of Dunning-Kruger effect in it too, because these people think they know what it means. And of course, there's bog standard misogyny in there. But there's also some strategic ploy agnotology in here, which is, of course, when the ignorance out there is deliberately manufactured, deliberately spread. They are doing misinformation and disinformation here. As I've said many times on this channel, you always have to ask who benefits from that? Who profits from that? And it's these guys. These guys get elected and Trump himself said it very famously. He loves uneducated people because they vote for people like him. They stay in power and they can keep just pilfering money out of taxpayers rather than put it into things like education so we don't all have to have exorbitant student loans in the first place. And hey, you know what you can do with a gender studies degree? You can work for governments and organizations and charities and corporations and make sure that idiots like this don't say dumb stuff like this in a public forum. <laughs> but of course, that's exactly what they don't want to do. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Great to be back after my summer break. I hope I wasn't gone too, too long, but I'll be back to making regular videos, uh, not every single week, but every couple of weeks now uh, for the rest of the year. Please click subscribe, check out some links down below, hit the notification bell, check out my Patreon and my Threadless if you'd like to support this channel. And as always, lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.